Hello everybody, Mike with Spray Jones, and I want to do a uh, sort of a, a open discussion here on an orphan in the industry for technical assistance and the power of YouTube and open chat forms and what have you. We're, we're going to use the power of this medium to kind of get the discussion, the dialogue going, and, and the discussion we're going to open up today is about zero clearance uh, natural gas uh, fireplace venting so in this picture uh, you will see that this is what is typically referred to as a zero clearance pipe it's for a natural gas fireplace it's not operating at a very high temperature and uh, the hot flue gases will go up the middle pipe and then you will have the cold air coming the combustion air coming down so the outer jacket is much much cooler than of course the inner jacket and there has been a lot of debate as to how this detail should be done when the zero clearance pipe is going up through the roof. And uh, I want to show you a picture of the roof penetration, the thimble. This is it right here. I'll zoom into it. So this is what's going on the outside of the roof deck. This is a sloped uh, flange, or they call it a thimble. Uh, the vent pipe through goes through the middle. It's going to be you know, flashed and, and caulked and sealed on the outside. Uh, so here's your hot flue gas going up the middle, and then your cold air, combustion air is coming down uh, the outer jacket. And then this is going to be 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 feet, whatever, higher, taller through the roof than where your uh, furnace or fireplace is. So the big question is when we're doing a spray foam closed cell non-vented roof deck, uh, how do you get this sealed up? And, you know, I get these scared answers from the fireplace and uh, gas people saying, well, you know, it's a heat emitting device and uh, you should be staying a couple of inches away. And it's like, okay, how? We have spray foam to the underside of the roof deck. We, we've all encountered this at some point, right? You got your foam to the roof deck. There's no venting. There's no airspace between it. Now, whether it's spray foam or, or fiberglass, how do you get the insulation close to the penetration? Because this is either going through the ceiling on a conventional attic with blow-in, or it's going to be going through the roof deck with spray foam to it. And you can't have a two or a three inch gap around here. Like you see this generous area that we left on a recent house that we were spraying. We left this area wide open because we didn't know what the owner was going to be doing, what type of pipe he was going to be using. Uh, if it's a wood fireplace, those are usually coming with an insulated jacket, a box, uh, the hot, uh, extremely hot a fireplace jacket chimney goes through it and then the outer jacket is uh, a stop that the insulation comes up to and no further those ones are clear-cut you can't touch them you can't come any contact with them they got warning labels all over them that you know your insulation goes here and no further that's not what we're talking about here this is what's called zero clearance so things can get right up to it and I had a guy say to me well you know uh, just because it's zero clearance doesn't mean it's actually you know it can be touching anything and I'm like really then what does zero clearance mean so I'm gonna give you some anecdotal information all right this isn't take this to your state and your county and this is this is law or gospel right this isn't this isn't code necessarily compliant for your jurisdiction but this is what we have been doing in the Canadian winter to deal with these and then you take the information and see if it bears out in your neck of the woods literally okay so what we've done is the thimble gets cut in through the roof deck as you can see here a rough opening is cut the thimble is placed somebody said to me well we're just gonna pack this full of rock saw we're gonna pack this full of rock saw and then we'll seal this up with uh, tin and high temperature caulking and then you spray up to the tin and no further and I'm like okay so I got four or I got two I got three I got four or five inches of closed cell foam Do -do 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 -do. I'm spraying two three four five inches of closed cell foam then all of a sudden I get to this spot and now I've got whatever we can stuff with rock saw in there and then we're totally reliant on metal flanges like this this is holding this piece up how are you gonna get caulking around here how are you gonna air seal this how are you gonna seal these bolts on and on and on see the problem right so it's like okay if you go and stuff this full of rock saw and then you put a, a, a flap over it and then you caulk and air seal it airtight that's all the insulation you're going to have in this one space so it's a huge weak spot and if it condenses and if it gets wet you know it could damage this section of the roof deck fairly easily over 
pick any area of time, you know, two years, five years, 10 years, right? And then you're going to have a failure. So how do we go about this? What have we done that we don't have a failure? Well, what I have found is, and this one was frosted up. So what we did is we thawed it all out. We got a heater, pointed a little heat gun at this, melted this all out. And then rather than uh, stuffing this with rock sol, what we did is we, we put the closed cell foam in it. And here's why. This outer jacket stays quite cool, especially up at the roof line. Okay, so the hot gases are coming up the middle and they're 220, 230 degrees Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit. The outer jacket, folks, we have found with a laser gun that the outer jacket never gets much above 100, 110 Fahrenheit at most. Okay, and we'll see on the data sheet that the spray foam can handle much, much more than that. So what we will do is, since this outer jacket is relatively cool compared to the inner jacket, and the spray foam has a rating up to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. We will put the closed cell foam in and around here. We'll get this air sealed up tight. We'll get this totally airtight around here. And then we'll, we'll go over top of this. And then what we will have them do is we will have them install the extension pipe from the thimble down to where the fireplace is going to go. And we'll go back to an image of that. Okay, here's our image. And they've installed the extension pipe. It, it, could be long enough it doesn't matter they're gonna stub up to this right and they have put this piece through so then what we've done is we have completely sprayed in that square we have sprayed in the thimble and then we have come down the outer lining of the vent pipe so that the reason being is that the cold air that's gonna be drawn in can warm up and not immediately frost up condense and drip right at the roof line so we don't just want to spray in three or four inches around this pipe right where the, it's going through the thickness of the spray foam we actually want to spray around it and come down like we would do on a plumbing pipe like if you have a vent pipe going through a roof deck you've got a stack right you come down those stacks a foot maybe even two feet all right that way the cold air dropping down the stack pipe isn't going to frost up and condense the outside of that jacket in cold weather climate in the, in the United States or in Canada. So what we have found is that this works exceptionally well. I have this done in my own house and this outer jacket never gets above 100 Fahrenheit. I've found it, okay? And we'll see that in a report with residential um, ducting, residential ducting is rated all the way out to 120 Fahrenheit and we got spray foam approved for that. So what I have found is this is the only sensible way, even though we do not have white paper data from somebody that wants to take authority and say, listen, this is how it should be detailed out. This is an orphan, folks. This is an orphan. Like spray foam guys aren't going to take uh, and tell you exactly how this should be sprayed. And the fireplace guys want nothing to do with it. Roxol isn't going to have anything to do with it. So you tell me. The building code inspectors don't know. So who is going to have authority over this? This is why I'm doing this video. You as the end recipient or the spray foam installer start thinking about how you do your details and I have found that this outer jacket is cool enough that it's not going to reach um, degradation level on the spray foam it's not combustion level it's it's going to degradate the spray foam right above 180 degrees Fahrenheit the spray foam will start to break down char and disbond this is the only proper way I find to deal with these because the jacket is not super hot the spray foam comes in contact with it. It seals the roof deck airtight. You're not going to have a condensing point. You're not going to have condensation up inside the roof deck. And the hot gases can get out the middle. The cold air can come down. It's not going to condense on the outside of the uh, of the liner. And then the liner is not going to be hot enough to disbond the spray foam. So it's win-win for everybody. There is no immediate uh, flammability dam uh, danger or uh, combustion danger or disbonding danger or what have you. And I've got this done in my own house. The straighter the line, the, the cooler and the dis greater the distance, the cooler it's going to run because it's further away physically from the fireplace. And what uh, increases uh, temperature is dwell time. So I think by code, these pipes are only allowed to have like one or two, two bends in them, two bends maximum, I think. And only up to a certain angle, like not 90 degrees, but like 45 degrees or something like that. Let's take a look at a quick report to just back up what we're saying here. All right, so here's the Huntsman uh, technical data sheet for the HFO system. This is the Canadian CCMC certified foam. I'm not sure if the U.S. formulation is going to be close enough. I'm suspecting they're not, so just be careful that uh, 
It may not be exactly the same in the United States as it is for Canada, but because heat lock is so prevalent uh, in the Can Can Canadian market in the U.S., that's why I'm sort of using this one. When I talk about wall tight and BSF, Americans are always emailing me saying, hey, where can I get that purple foam? And I'm like, well, you kind of can't. All right, this is, this is the section that here that I want you to see. It says that this product should not be used when continuous service temperature of the substrate is outside the range of either this minus 60 which I kind of find funny but <laughs> whatever that, that would mean some cryogenic facility I think minus 60 degrees Celsius or uh, plus 80 degrees Celsius which is in Fahrenheit uh, minus 76 Fahrenheit all the way to 180 uh, Fahrenheit so this is the number that we're interested in the 180 Fahrenheit or 80 80 degrees Celsius water folks boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit 212 uh, and we're well below that so 80 Celsius is hot very very hot very hot hotter than anything that you're gonna get on a um, residential uh, trunk or branch line off of a furnace and we're approved and have been approved for quite some time that the closed cell foam or open cell foam can be in direct continuous contact with uh, duct work um, so if you've got a uh, zero clearance pipe that is going to be well underneath the 180 Fahrenheit and and they are it's not like we're flirting with this with plus or minus one or two or ten degrees Fahrenheit right we're not dealing with a close call here uh, like you would in an industrial situation. So, I mean, the, the piping that we've seen, that I've seen, that I've come in contact with, and it's just been by looking at it with a laser infrared gun or a thermal imaging gun, they've never gotten, that we've been able to find, never gotten over 100 Fahrenheit. I've found ranges from 82 Fahrenheit to 95 Fahrenheit all the way to 100, okay, which is still well below the 180 Fahrenheit. So, having it in contact with uh, under 180 means it's not going to break down so the foam isn't going to actually light on fire it's not going to do anything like that it would just char and it would it would uh, the char would disbond the chemical and physical adhesion to the substrate and then you'd get a gap and we've seen this with um, hot vessel tanks in the industrial sector that are dealing with uh, hot tar or hot oil uh, and they've spiked the tank the tank was rated for a certain temperature and then the, the tank got away on them and there was a, a failure of the mechanical systems and it, it spiked in temperature and it'll char the spray foam when they sell high temp foam for those situations but that's not that, that's a total side issue we're dealing with residential grade uh, CCMC certified foam in Canada or in the United States you know building code certified foam that's going to meet uh, ICC so 180 Fahrenheit. So back to this whole issue with the uh, zero clearance pipe. Okay, how I arrive at these decisions is to uh, evaluate already presently known scientific data on the foam, on the pipes, on what have you, and then extrapolate the information in a safe way that would make sense, meaning I'm not just going to jump to some wild conclusion. And I'll show you about how, I, how I'm doing that here with this report. I don't have a Huntsman uh, heat lock report, but I do have a BASF one from 2010. And back then there was a big discussion on whether or not closed cell foam could in fact be sprayed direct to residential ductwork. You know, is the ductwork going to be too hot? Heat emitting devices, return air plenums, all these types of things. Are we exceeding these things? So uh, BASF had a third party report with Morrison Hirschfield and we're just going to scroll down here to the sauce and this is how I come about making decisions. It says that BSF spray foam systems have been tested by Exova. That's a uh, third party uh, testing group for 96 hours at a maximum constant temperature of 93 degrees Celsius. Now 93 Celsius is going to be in excess of 180 Fahrenheit uh, in accordance to an ASTM C411-05 test. The installation satisfactorily passed the test and showed no as adverse effects to the heat of 93 degrees Celsius. So that's just under boiling water. Seven more degrees and we can boil our, boil our water, right? The BASF spray foam system has also been evaluated by CCMC. This agency has rated the installation for a maximum in-service temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. So for my American friends, uh, 70 degrees Celsius is 158 Fahrenheit. Now, 
we've seen through our own testing of just taking a heat gun and seeing where these zero clearance pipes are, they're not getting to 158 Fahrenheit. They're barely getting up to 100 Fahrenheit. Uh, so it says all research performed to date shows that a typical residential duct maintain a maximum exterior surface temperature of between 40 to 50 degrees centigrade. So that's uh, 104 Fahrenheit to 122 Fahrenheit. It can therefore be seen that BSF spray foam systems would be capable of handling the standard heat produced from the exterior of a residential duct with a large safety factor and meet the requirements of sentences 9.33 of the National Building Code, right? So again, they state here that the two the two BSF spray foam systems, the uh, Entertight open cell half pound foam, are capable of handling temperatures obtained on exterior of ductwork and show that the AS and is accordance with the ASTM C four eleven test. Okay, so back to our images on the zero clearance pipe. So wrapping this up in two minutes, I think the data is clear. Uh, this pipe is not getting hot. We've seen that. We've been testing it uh, multiple locations at the roof line further down. But w the roof line where your transition is, where you're going to be putting the spray foam, that's what matters, right? Where the spray foam is coming in contact. How hot is it getting there? Fortunately for us with these roof details, the roof is a good 15, 16 feet taller than where the fireplace is generally going to be at. Uh, the outside of the jacket can handle it. It's not getting 120 Fahrenheit. Maximum we've seen is 100. The spray foam can handle 120 Fahrenheit. We've got ductwork approvals on that. So the question is, can it or can it not handle the heat? Absolutely, it can handle the heat. All right, so then what damage is it going to do to the piping? None. We've already seen that with the ducting. All right, what damage is it going to do to something else? Nothing. So what are the risks? We're offsetting a risk of doing an inferior detail with other combustible products or non-combustible products to try and satisfy somebody else's white paper value because this is truly an orphan. Nobody wants to take responsibility for it. Not the furnace people, not the fireplace people, not the HVAC people, not the roofing people, and not even the spray foam manufacturers are wanting to do it. But uh, hopefully in time, this uh, will get them wanting to do an advisory bulletin to say this is how these should be dealt with. I think the evidence is here. The spray foam can be sprayed to it. It can handle it, so it should. Uh, it should be sprayed to the underside of the deck, sprayed to the thimbles, uh, seal the entire unit up, not choking the air off, of course, right? everything that we've laid out thus far. And that way you're not going to have a condensation problem, a roof deck degradation problem, a spray foam degradation problem, and we know it can handle the heat. So let's use the product for what it's designed to do. You uh, you lay a comment. Uh, tell me what you're doing in your county, your state, your province. I'd love to hear. How do you handle these? What have you encountered? Have you had somebody say yes, no, dig it out, change it? Um, and if so, what was the solution? Uh, I'd really like to know because this is an orphan and it needs to have something official one day and maybe one day the official white paper will will catch up to what we've already been knowing can and cannot be done in the real world so share like subscribe don't forget to comment and i'll catch you on a, another video probably after christmas bye